next time you're in the classroom, look around you and you'll see that although all your peers are humans, the same species as you, no two individuals in the class will look exactly the same, unless you have identical twins in the room. This variation in traits is true not only for a human population, but for any species. Some of the differences observed within a population are caused by the environment and experiences of each individual. For example, hormonal changes brought on by cooler temperatures result in the fur of an arctic fox turning from brown to white. Although the environment definitely plays a role in introducing variation in a population, most of the variation seen in populations are caused by differences in genes. For example, one gene is responsible for determining whether rats will have brown or black fur. With the exception of clones, such as identical twins, each individual within a population carries a unique set of genes, half of which were received from one parent and half from the other. The total set of genes of all individuals in a given population is called the gene pool. A gene is a discrete unit of hereditary information consisting of a specific nucleotide sequence in DNA. So nucleotides are the building blocks of DNA, and therefore of genes. Differences between individuals can be measured all the way down to the level of individual nucleotides. However, measuring differences within a gene pool at this level is not particularly useful because much of the variation lies within non-coding regions of the DNA, meaning that these variations don't result in an observable difference. It's often better to measure variation at the gene level because it is at this level that both quantitative and discrete traits are coded. So how does genetic variation arise in a population? Well, one of the ways is as a result of mutations, which result in a change in the original DNA sequence. Mutations can occur as mistakes during DNA replication. However, if the mutation does not happen in a cell that is passed down to offspring, such as an egg or sperm cell, the change cannot lead to a new allele, which is an alternative version of a gene. Variation can also arise at the chromosome level during the process of meiosis. This is a modified type of cell division found only in sexually reproducing organisms, which results in the production of gametes. There are two ways in which variation is introduced during meiosis, crossing over and independent assortment. Crossing over happens early on in meiosis in prophase one and results in the exchange of DNA between homologous chromosomes, so between the paternal and maternal chromosome of each chromosome pair. This results in recombinant chromosomes. The second way in which variation is introduced is as a result of the random arrangement of chromosome pairs on the cell plate during metaphase one. In humans, the random assortment of chromosomes gives rise to over 8.4 million possible combinations of chromosomes. And this is without taking crossing over into account, which introduces even more variation. Another mechanism that contributes to genetic variation in sexually reproducing organisms is random fertilization. As I just mentioned in humans, each male and female gamete represents one of about 8.4 million possible chromosome combinations due to independent assortment. The fusion of a male gamete with a female gamete during fertilization is completely random and will produce a cell with any of about 70 trillion chromosome combinations. If we factor in variation brought in by crossing over, the number of combinations is even higher. Hopefully you can see how unique you really are. Now that we've learned how genetic variation is introduced into a population of sexually reproducing organisms, it is important to remember the evolutionary significance of this. Natural selection is the driving force behind evolution, and natural selection results in the accumulation of genetic variations favored by the environment. Another way of thinking about this is that genetic variation is the raw material needed for evolution to occur.